Greetings everyone and welcome back again. This time we'll be looking at a problem that I never knew existed until I started amassing a small collection of these, Super 8mm films. And then the solution I came up with using 3D printing and a bit of trial and error. As a film fan, I've had a Super 8mm projector set up for a while now. But as I get more films, they start to look worse on my shelf. Usually, when you buy them, due to their age, the boxes are pretty tatty and look bad next to other items on your shelf. There are replaceable boxes you can buy that look like these ones. But they're still cardboard, so will degrade over time. It's rare that I ever get a film with an actual case. I've only seen one or two so far that someone has made a custom cover for. It's fine, but obviously it doesn't match anything modern. And like I said, it's rare that I find them. Looking at the size of the film reels in the box gave me an idea. It's not far off the size of a disc, a DVD, Blu-ray, etc., so surely it would fit into a Blu-ray case. Without thinking about it too much, I went ahead and bought some empty Blu-ray cases, only to find that, at a glance, they're a perfect fit for the Super 8. But as you try to close it, the closing mechanism gets caught on the reel, and these cases can barely contain the thickness of it as well. Sold by the Blu-ray case idea, as it would match other items in my collection, I bought some of these. They're double Blu-ray cases, the kind you get with special editions or box sets. They come with these insert to add another couple of discs, which we don't need. Now the reel sits perfectly in this case, and the latches to close it are on the edge here instead of in the middle, so it would never get caught on the reel. But I need something to hold the reel in place so it won't get damaged or become unwound. For this, there's already a pretty strong clip in the case that we can use, but essentially we need to confer this disc holding mechanism to hold a Super 8mm reel something that's the same size as the spool holder on the projector, but fixes into the disc clips in here. So what we need is a kind of spool that's the right size for the Super 8. But the spool here is smaller than the diameter of the hole in a disc. This spool will have to sit above the disc holder somehow, but high enough to allow the object to be clipped in place as if it's still a disc. There also needs to be enough clearance here so that the disc clips can latch on correctly. Lastly, I think there'll need to be some way of pressing the disc release catches just in case you get one of those stubborn Blu-ray cases, the type that just won't let go of the disc. So maybe I'll put a hole in the side of the wall or something you can poke your finger in or a pen to depress the catches and release the spool. And it will save on a bit of 3D printing filament too. All right, here it is in CAD, the first pass anyway. What you're looking at basically is a cut right down the center of what will be the spool. So this distance here is the same as a modern disc. Then the case clips will be able to sit in this cavity here. And that part there is the right size for the Super 8 reel to sit on. It's about as small as I can make it and just about should fit inside that double Blu-ray case I showed you earlier. It's quite simple to turn this 2D geometry into a 3D object. As it's perfectly circular, 
we can take half of this profile and rotate it 360 degrees around that center point. For the cutout, I can extrude this shape into a block, then subtract one from another. leaving a hole to press the disc release catches if required. If we just take a quick look at the projector again, you'll see there are small bumps here to hold the disc a little bit tighter. So I'll add a couple of these just by extruding this shape and adding it to the other part, then mirroring it to the other side. There it is done. Now I'll 3D print it. I'll export the part as an STL file so we can open it in the 3D printing slicing program. The printer I have is an Ultimaker 2 so I use Cura to prep the model for printing. In case you don't know what this program does, it imports the CAD file then slices it up into layers then tells the printer how to create that model in real life, where to move the tool head to create the shapes and lay down the material. There are other settings you can change too. I won't go into these too much, but the only one I'll change on camera here is this one, support material. There's an overhang on this model and gravity prevents us from printing in midair. So the printer provides support material for it to print the surface on. For now, I'll turn this on and let it generate the support material on its own, but I might create some custom material in the CAD file eventually, depending on how easy or hard this is to remove from the final model. It will make sense when you see it. So I can just export this toolpath now as G-code, then pop the SD card in the printer and get it going. Here we go, the finished product, kind of. I can use a knife here just to pop it off the print bed. And here's that support material I was talking about. It breaks away pretty easily, so give me a second and I'll remove it all and we can test it out. There's a couple of little bits of material in this cavity here where the disc clips need to go but not enough to cause any problems. How does it hold on to the Blu-ray case? Very well. And how does the Super 8 fit? Yeah, that's a bit tight. Compare it to how easily it slides on and off the projector I mean, I want it to be a little tighter than that, but this is too tight in my opinion. What I'll do is refine the CAD model a bit and reprint it, but I won't make you sit through that again. Here's the final product. Yep, I know it looks the same. I'd like to say I got it on the second time, but I didn't. This is about the fourth or fifth try. I experimented with smaller sizes, larger bumps, and eventually created my own support material. This is what the CAD file looks like now. And you can see the three rings of support material I created 
which are very easy to remove. I got annoyed with removing the lattice from all of these older ones. It worked out really well. Look how easy it is to remove now. Two of the parts just fall away and the third one breaks off. It fits perfectly in the Blu-ray case just like before. I adjusted the cavity inside slightly, but now the spool fits much better. It's still slightly stiffer than the projector with this particular film, but with the different amount of reels there are, this was the best size for all the different types of plastic you encounter when collecting these. To finish it off, I created some custom artwork for the Super 8mm films based on the cover of the box. and stuck a bit of information on the back and the title on the spine. I have to say, I think it blends in really well with everything else now. If you want one of these yourself, I've put it on Thingiverse, which is a repository for loads of 3D printable models, so you can download it for free and print your own off. Both models are there, one with my design support material and one without if you want to use your printer's support settings instead. Any other 3D printing projects I show on my channel I'll be uploading to Thingiverse too. Share the ideas. Thanks for watching.